Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where a father throws out his daughter's birthday cake. Am I the butthole for leaving my stepdaughter's birthday party after my husband threw out the cake that I made for her? I've been married to my husband Jeff for a year now. He has a 12 year old daughter with his deceased wife. When I first met Jeff, it was obvious that he was struggling as a single parent. For his daughter's birthday, he'd usually get a cake from the bakery. This has been the case since her mom passed away. I thought that I'd bake her a birthday cake for her 12th birthday, which was last week, as a gesture to show some motherly love and support. Jeff agreed, and he told me what his daughter's favorite flavors are and what she likes and so on. I baked the cake in the flavor she likes and the icing she likes, but one thing that was missing was the blueberries. I couldn't include them because I went to the nearest store and they didn't have any. I was running out of time and I couldn't get them, so I ended up just leaving the cake as it was, thinking that it wouldn't be a big deal. The party started and Jeff was busy taking care of everything else. He then came into the kitchen and asked to see the cake before bringing it out. I showed it to him and he got so angry when he saw that there were no blueberries on top. He went on and on about how I didn't fully commit to making the cake and he trusted me to take care of it and just basically said that he should have just ordered one from the bakery. We got into an argument and he ended up taking the cake and throwing it in the trash can. I was stunned and he said, you know what, forget it, I'll get one from the bakery. I blew up and screamed at him. He told me to stop, but I went upstairs, got dressed and left. He tried to get me to stay, but I refused and went to my parents. He later called and then texted about how I overreacted and hurt him and my stepdaughter by leaving. He also said that I created the situation by not properly making the birthday cake just because I did put blueberries on top. I refused to respond, but my parents say that he was justified since he must have felt pressured from the stress of making his daughter happy on her birthday. He keeps trying to speak to me, but I'm not responding. Am I the butthole? Did I overreact? Yo, what's the big deal about blueberries? Who cares that there's no blueberries on top of a cake? Why is your husband so wrapped up about it? So not only is your husband disrespecting you, but he also threw away a present meant for his daughter. So isn't that also disrespectful to his daughter because he's tossing her birthday gifts? OP, what is going on with your husband here? This is just so bizarre and out there and like being angry over nothing for no reason that I have to feel like there's other red flags as well, right? Is your husband normally this controlling and abusive and just mean? Or is this a weird one-off incident? In any event, OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I think the way that you reacted is pretty normal. I'm giving your husband 2 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for <laughs> Yo, this title? Am I the butthole for telling my 14-year-old daughter that she's average looking? I'm a 39-year-old woman, and I have a very insecure 14-year-old daughter who has a depressingly unhealthy obsession with her looks. She often avoids mirrors and pictures because her mood instantly drains when she sees herself. She constantly asks her father or me if we think that she's pretty, and we always tell her the same thing, that she's a beautiful girl inside and out. I understand how most teenage girls are with their body image because I was a teenage girl at one point myself. However, my daughter's vanity is not only becoming exhausting to those around her, but I fear that it's causing her to slowly lose herself. Yesterday, I decided to sit her down to chat with her about this, to discuss what's bothering her, and to see if she's willing to visit a therapist. She told me that she didn't want to talk about it, but as her mother, of course, I'm going to be worried about her, so I insisted and she finally agreed. A few minutes into the conversation, she asked me, Mom, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugarcoating. The kids at my school think that I'm ugly and say that I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Do you really think I'm beautiful or are you just lying? I'm an honest person, so I gave her the most honest answer I had. I told her that she's average looking like most people in the world are and that it's not a bad thing to have an average appearance. She immediately got up and left without saying a word and just went into her room for the rest of the night. Today, she's been cold and distant and I think that I upset her, which wasn't my intention at all. Am I the butthole? Yo, have you guys ever <laughs> Have you guys ever seen Inside Out and like it's got these like little magical little creatures who live inside a little girl's head and they deal with memories that get formed 
And every once in a while, when a major life event happens, it forms what's called a core memory, which becomes like a cornerstone of the kid's personality. OP, <laughs> with this story, you have created a core memory for this child. And in the movie Inside Out, most core memories were happy, so they were like bright yellow. But sometimes, when a really bad event happens, the core memory was blue to represent sadness. I think this core memory is probably blue, OP. I mean, jeez, OP, come on! Teenage girls don't already have enough on their plate that now she's got to deal with an unsupportive parent? I really, genuinely, truly believe that what you said to your daughter is going to be a fundamental memory that she is never going to forget for the rest of her life, that is going to permanently affect her self-image. Jeez, a teenage girl already has to deal with predators and social pressure and teachers and bullies. She can't even at least have her mom in her corner. You know, many, many years ago, I heard the phrase, when a woman thinks about herself, she hears her father's voice. So if her father was critical, she thinks critically of herself. And if her father was supportive, she thinks positive things about herself. So I go out of my way to tell my daughter every single day I love her, and I'm trying to get into the habit of complimenting her appearance every day to build up strong self-confidence. Say, you're pretty today, your dress looks so nice, I love your hair, something like that, just so she, you know, has a decent amount of confidence because I want her to grow up to be a happy, loving person. Man, I'm just so blown away by this post. OP, you're literally bullying your daughter. How hard is it to support your own kid? My God. OP, I'm giving you 3.5 out of 5 buttholes. Nine times out of 10 when someone says, I'm just a really honest person, that's just code for, I'm a complete and total douchebag. I'm giving your daughter 0 out of 5 buttholes. She's upset at you, and she should be upset at you. Am I the butthole for telling my parents that I'm behaving exactly like they raised me to behave? I'm a middle kid, my older brother is the golden child, and my sister is the baby who always got her way. I was mostly ignored, and I was fine with it. I got into lots of trouble, but my parents didn't really care enough to either punish me or help me through it. My guidance counselor in high school took an interest in me though. She saw something in me. I hope that everyone who needs it has someone like her. She saw that my parents didn't really get involved in my education. She stepped up. She helped me find out what I love. She motivated me enough that I got a full ride scholarship, which was good because my parents had dick all for me. I'm 30 and now planning my wedding. It's going to be a destination wedding because I want it small. We're paying for our six guests to come. My future in-laws, including my husband's mom, dad, brother, and sister, and my maternal grandparents. That's it. We're going to have a big party for friends and family when we get back. I'm not no contact with my family, I just don't make any effort to talk to them, and they reciprocate. They did find out about the wedding though. Now, they all want to come. I said that they're welcome to come, and I sent them invitations. They asked me if I needed anything to set up their travel plans. I said they needed to get here on their own. They're invited, but I'm not paying. They said that they raised me better than that, and since I was paying for my fiancé's family, I should pay for them too. But... <laughs> That's a hard no. Hard. I told them that, actually, my fiancé is the one paying. She earns about the same money as me, but she has a settlement from her first marriage. I never told them about the settlement. They, again, said that they raised me better than to ignore family. These are the same people who skipped my graduation from high school and university. I have a million other examples, but I think that says it all. I just replied that I was happy they were interested in being part of my wedding day, and I hoped they could make it, but I fully understood if they gave it a pass. I said that they were the ones who raised me to think of myself as not really being a part of their family, so I was actually behaving exactly like they raised me. I'm on your side, OP. Maybe it's time to upgrade kind of no contact to actually no contact. I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes, I'm giving your family 2.5 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for making my oldest child pay back a $3,000 dress that she ruined? My oldest daughter, Bethany, who's 16, has a step-sibling, Maria, who's 14, almost 15. Bethany and I are white, while my husband and Maria are Mexican. They've been in our lives for the past seven years, and overall, our relationship has been good. Maria's quinceanera is coming up, and my husband and his ex-wife took her out to get her dress. The dress and alterations came out to around $3,000. My daughter has been very jealous of the whole party. 
I informed her that this is part of their culture, just like when she had a huge Sweet 16 party with her friends. I spent more time with her to try to make her feel better about it, and I got her own much cheaper dress for the party. The party is supposed to be in two weeks, but my daughter, after an argument with Maria about the TV, scribbled Sharpie all over the expensive dress and ripped the back. Everyone got pissed about that. I gave money to my husband and his ex-wife to try to get a new dress ASAP. I told my daughter that she'll need to get a job and pay back the full price of the dress as punishment. We got into a huge argument over it. My daughter says that this whole situation isn't fair because I'm choosing Maria and being a jerk. But am I being a jerk? OP, you would be a jerk if you didn't punish your daughter. Your daughter's 16. That's old enough to start really taking responsibility for your actions. You can't just trash a $3,000 items and be like, whoops, tee hee, I'm a 16 year old teenager, not my problem. Nah, that's not how the world works, man. If you don't teach your daughter consequences now, then you're basically raising her to be a terrible person. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving Bethany 3 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole because I won't buy food for my ex and our kids? My ex and I divorced when our kids were young. Our kids are now 12 and 15 years old. We've been divorced for 7 years now. We have 50-50 custody and she remarried so spousal support is done. Her new husband recently left her. I don't know why and I'm not interested in the particulars. In my opinion, he didn't seem like a terrible guy and he left her their house so once again I have no idea if there's a debt load or anything like that. She called me last week to see if I could please help her out with some food. She said that she had run through her budget for food for her and the kids and basically begged me to help her out. I asked her to give me a few minutes and I'd call her back. I talked to my girlfriend who lives with me and we agreed that we could spare some food. We have a freezer full of elk, venison, and wild hog, as well as a well-stocked pantry. We also have some beef, pork, and chicken. I called my ex back and told her to come by and pick up a big load of groceries. This is where it got weird. She said that she didn't want groceries. She wanted me to give her money for Uber Eats or something. I said no. I have two weeks worth of food that you can have, but I'm not giving you money for takeout. She called me a butthole for expecting her to be grateful for my scraps. That I was expecting her to be all domestic? What? Everything I was going to give her was either frozen meat, canned veggies, fresh vegetables from the garden, and pasta and rice in unopened bags. I want my kids to eat well. Both of my kids hunt, and my son, the older one, is a pretty good cook. He regularly makes meals for all of us at my house. Both of my kids eat game meat as well as store-bought meat. I honestly thought that I was doing what she asked. I told my girlfriend not to bother packing anything up. I texted both my kids and told them to let me know if they were actually going hungry and I would take care of everything. <laughs> both kids texted me back and said that there was food in the house. It just had to be cooked. Both of them also said that if I was willing to spare some elk and hog roasts, then they would happily take them. <laughs> I laughed and said that I would take them over later. My ex, however, is telling everyone that I'm trying to manipulate her into behaving like a housewife and refusing to buy food for my kids. Some people are taking her side and saying that I'm a dick for not helping her out. So I'm asking for 100% balls out honesty here. I don't think that I'm in the wrong, but maybe I'm missing something. Okay, OP, let me pull my pants down so I can get my balls out for 100% balls out honesty here. <laughs> <laughs> when both your kids texted you and they're like, no dad, we got plenty of food. That's so funny to me because most kids at the opportunity to get more food in the house, they would jump at the chance because I remember being a hungry 15 year old. I would eat anything. Oh, food. Yeah, I'm down. Totally. What is it? I don't care. Bring it over. I'll, I'll eat it. But they're like, <laughs> but they're like, no, we got plenty of food, dad. We just got to cook it. It's not a big deal. And how is she accusing you of forcing her to be domestic? It would be one thing if you were like, yes, I'll bring you elk meat, but only if you put on a 50s housewife dress, put on makeup, put on an apron, and when I come over, you cook me a three-course meal that I eat and then leave. Then I think she would have an argument for you forcing her to be domestic. But if you're just buying her meat, you're not forcing her to be I mean, I guess technically she is being domestic, but you're not benefiting from it. So, so, so what's your motivation? Where's the logic? This doesn't make any sense, especially since the 15-year-old can cook. Oh my god, okay. 
OP, you said that you don't know the particulars of why your ex-wife got divorced a second time. I think I'm starting to get a sense for why. Your ex-wife is selfish, entitled, disrespectful, and lazy. Also, I gotta point out, if OP has 50-50 custody, then he literally is helping to support his kids. He's helping by watching them 50% of the time. OP, you get an easy 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving your wife, <laughs> let's, say, let's say 2 out of 5 buttholes, 1 for each of my balls that are currently out. Am I the butthole for telling my vegan sister that she can't serve only vegan food at our family reunion? Every year, our family has a reunion where different members host. This year, it's my younger sister's turn. She's been vegan for about three years and is quite passionate about it. We all respect her choices and make sure there's a good variety of vegan options whenever we have family gatherings. When she announced that she'll be hosting, she also said the entire menu would be vegan to align with her beliefs and that it's a chance for the family to try something different. Some family members were excited, but others, including many of the older folks, were pretty upset and felt like they were being forced into her lifestyle, even if just for one meal. I spoke to her privately and asked if she'd be open to including a few non-vegan dishes for those who aren't keen on a full vegan menu. She got quite defensive, saying that this was her chance to showcase veganism and that for one meal, everyone can give it a go. I respect her beliefs, but I also think that forcing an entire family to adopt her choices, even if just for one meal, isn't fair. She's now upset with me for not being supportive and says that I'm not respecting her choices. Am I the butthole? Okay, if your sister is hosting and buying the food and cooking, then she gets to decide what's on the table. I don't understand why you guys are so sensitive about it. She's forcing her lifestyle on us. Give me a break, dude. It's a salad. Just eat the salad. Or don't. Just mope in the corner that you didn't get your steak, and then afterwards go to McDonald's and buy a hamburger or something. It's not a big deal. OP, I'm giving you and the upset family members 0 0.5 out of 5 buttholes, and I'm giving your sister 0 out of 5 buttholes. That was r slash am I the butthole, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.